My name is Dr. Donna Mendez, and I am the first black female board certified by the American Board of Surgery as a vascular surgeon. I am proud of that fact because I have been practicing since 1984 and have seen many changes occur in my profession and our nation. There are more female surgeons, there are more black physicians, there is a new gender gap, and we now have our first African American president. Many of these changes are also evidenced in vascular surgery. I chose vascular surgery because I found it gratifying to see results immediately, as when I perform a bypass on a diabetic who needs increased blood flow in the leg to avoid an amputation. I found it challenging when I am on call and a life-threatening vascular emergency presents, such as a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, requiring clamping the main blood vessel in the body to save a life. But as I have grown older, vascular surgery has also matured, and many of our surgical procedures have been simplified. Minimally invasive techniques have allowed us to use stents and balloons to increase blood flow to extremities, to the brain, and to treat abdominal aortic aneurysms. Various procedures are now offered to the patient before they develop the complications of peripheral arterial disease, which was known in my community as poor circulation. Through our vascular society, we have educated the public about the risks of developing this entity now better known as PAD, so that as baby boomers age, they are made more aware of why it happens so they can start developing good habits early and hopefully prevent it. I also realized early in my career that the incidence of vascular disease was highest in my patient population. My practice is located in New York City near Harlem and I treat many Hispanic and African American patients. I realized that many patients came to see me when their disease process had progressed to the point that often all I could offer was an amputation. Treating my patients meant that I had to work a little harder because the disease was worse and because they presented later. I realized that my patient population had an enormous atherosclerotic burden due to a family history of peripheral arterial disease, heart attack, and stroke. The additional factors of obesity, smoking, and not treating their diabetes and cholesterol only complicated their vascular disease. I saw that the rate of amputation was more than twice that of Caucasians and I had compassion because they are just like me. Consequently, my initial attraction to vascular surgery has matured, as has the field, and as I have dedicated myself to educating my community about the risks they face simply because they are African American or Hispanic. I continue to find vascular surgery exciting because of all these reasons. I invite all who wish to help determine why there is such a huge atherosclerotic burden and this patient population to join me as we continue to treat and study this disproportionate entity. I am confident that we can determine the reasons why and I am hopeful that all of us will start to realize what these risks are and begin to modify them at an earlier age. These five practices are not new but with so many people of all races reaching senior status it is important they are reminded about the positive impact they can have on their own health, vascular health. So please, stop smoking, eat a healthy, low-fat diet, maintain good cholesterol levels, take care of blood pressure, and keep it in a normal range. Exercise regularly. Even a moderate walking program can be effective. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.